Governor Tim Wall's appointment of Tony Laurie to lead the Department of Human Services created a vacancy in District 11, representing communities in Carleton, Kennebec, Pine, and St. Louis counties. Representative Jason Rarick won the contest, and now Senator Rarick joins me in the studio. Congratulations and welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. You are a lifelong resident of your district and an active member of your community. While campaigning for this seat, what did you hear most frequently from your constituents? Um, I think some of the things they talked about the most was uh, funding our transportation needs, uh, broadband access, and people working together at the Capitol. So uh, those are all things that I'm going to work hard on trying to do this year. Well, and speaking of broadband, um, you, you have said repeatedly that that is something that's very important to you. Mm -hmm. What is going to be the best way to increase access, internet access across the state? Yeah, you know, I think some of the things that I've worked on is working with the grant program and trying to make it so that a township or a city that doesn't have access can file and apply for the grant without a provider and then once they get the grant reach out to a provider and then the other thing that I was working on with uh, Senator Lori was uh, making it so that uh, bonding money is allowed to be used for the infrastructure. We believe it's the same thing as roads and bridges so uh, if we could accomplish that I think that would do wonders for getting some of that uh, backbone infrastructure in place. So efforts that you'll champion now that you're in the Senate. Yeah. You've served two terms in the House of Representatives, so you have lawmaking experience. What have you learned about the lawmaking process? Uh, you know, it's uh, something that is a little more involved than you generally think of in just watching from the outside. Uh, there's a long process a lot of times. Things you might think are so easy to get through. Uh, getting through the committee process, uh, getting things drafted, and then getting a consensus uh, takes a little bit of time. And a lot of times it maybe takes uh, two or three years to get something through, maybe even longer. Uh, but you know, you have to work with people, get to know uh, the chairs, get to know people from both sides of uh, the aisle, and work, work it that way and build consensus to be able to get something through. Well, that is a common complaint, how long things take. Is that something that you find you have to talk to your constituents about, like just understanding that it is a long process? Yeah, you know, sometimes you just try to explain that, that, you know, they believe something should get taken care of right now, and you have to explain that, yeah, it, there's a process involved, and uh, sometimes that's you think that's a bad thing, but uh, the unintended consequences sometimes, if you rush something through, end up hurting you more than they do help you. So uh, it's sometimes very good that the process is slow too. Is it true that you had lawn signs while you were campaigning for the Senate that said, I'm an electrician, not a politician? And uh, is that true? Yes. So uh, I, just, I believe it said, elect an electrician, not oh, a politician. Okay. Um, that's the slogan I took up right from the beginning uh, when I first ran. And uh, it was my background in the electrical uh, field and being I still work as an electrician. Um, that I came up with that slogan and I still believe that uh, being a politician is kind of a frame of mind uh, doing things based on getting reelected rather than doing what's right so that's why I still say I'm an electrician not a politician. So with that in mind the Democratic Party has traditionally been the party of tradespeople. Is that changing? You were endorsed by a handful of unions. Uh, you know, I believe a lot of people in the trades are it's very much like the area that I come from. They don't. They used to affiliate very closely with the Democrats, um, and they're starting to see a little bit of a change there from the party, and so they're not identifying closely with one or the other, um, and so they're looking at the the candidate themselves and. Uh, so I've worked very closely with the, the unions, especially the trade unions, in my four years here, and they've really appreciated that I bring that perspective to the Republican Party, and it's kind of the same thing in my district as well. They, they don't affiliate close to one or the other, so they appreciate that uh, I have that perspective and the working perspective and can bring that to the Capitol. Yeah, and it, it, it's historically been a unique perspective for a Republican. Uh, Tony Lorre preceded you in the seat, and before him it was his mother. Um, so the Senate has been represented by D.F. Fellers in your district for quite some time. Is, is it changing a little bit? You're talking about tradespeople, you know, not necessarily affiliating one way or another. Across the board, is it maybe changing a little bit? You know, I think we're starting to see a little bit of a change in the rural areas, but I think it's more, um, Republicans have been putting up uh, some very good candidates in their rural areas that identify very well. Um, I look at uh, representatives like Dan Fabian and Deb Keel. Um, you know, they're just so well known and fit their district so well and I guess I believe that's why I um, 
ran uh, when I was approached and asked to run, and that was why I decided to run because I felt I just I could identify with the people of the district and they would be able to identify with me. And I think that's more why we're seeing the change. The Duluth News Tribune posted a link to your election night gathering um, at which you said, we are going to stop everything that they think they are going to push through in the House. So upon your election, now the GOP majority is, is 35, 30, 32, thank you, <laughs> I'm trying to do the math. Um, so it's a little bit stronger here, but the House is DFL, the governor is DFL. If anything will get done, it will require compromise. Where are areas for compromise in your view? Um, you know, when I made the comment, I was kind of looking at their top 10, 12 bills that they put out there, uh, things that our side just is saying that's a little, little too far to the left. And so I think, you know, especially with the budget, um, I think we're going to have to look at things, and I'm hoping with the Senate side we can come with the approach, you know, let's streamline some of the things we're doing. Let's find the waste and the fraud that's happening. We've seen the legislative auditor come out with some reports that it does show that it's out there so that we can prioritize the things that are important. Senator Rarick, welcome to the Senate and thank you. Thank you.